of the colleagues, my team and I will share with you how the two schools, um, Xingnan Primary School and Juying Primary School, uh, which we belong to, um, partnered together uh, since last year to plan and implement the E2, E2K science program uh, since the beginning of last year. First, let me introduce the pioneers of the E2K science program jointly run by the, by the two schools. And they are Mrs. Swa Anling, the History of Science in Sinan Primary School, Mr. Lanopo, myself, History of Science from Juing Primary School, uh, Ms. Aisha from Juing Primary School, Madam Sumita, uh, Level Head of Science in Sinan Primary School, and Mr. Benjamin Wong, Wong uh, from Sinan Primary School. The presentation will be segmented into three parts. First, getting to the first classroom, uh, first lesson. Second, the planning that was done to make the E2K program, science program possible. Uh, the first five months, our experiences, observations, and learnings from the sessions we have conducted during the first five months of the program. And lastly, our plans for the years to come. Okay, why do we call up, collaborate? Okay, although um, Sinan Primary School and uh, Juing Primary School, uh, both schools, we saw the need to partner each other to run the E2K science program. The reasons for partnership uh, were different for both schools. For Juing Primary School, the P4 core last year was relatively small, with only about 95 students. By selecting 40 students from the cohort to join the program, some of them in a group of 40 might not be able to manage the rigor and demands of the program. Hence, uh, Aisha and I agree that we will only choose the top few students in the science program, uh, science, top few students in the science performance from the cohort, which uh, make up about 11 of them to join the program. On the other side, from uh, Sina Primary School, uh, they face the issue of having too many programs to engage the students after curriculum time. So as a result, there was a smaller pool of P4 students available and suitable uh, to select from the joint program. So as both schools could not gather enough students to take part in the E2K science program, an innovative solution was to group the students from the two schools together so that there was a sizable number of students. So there was about 41 of them. And the number of students uh, was ideal for exchange of ideas, for rich and meaningful discussions okay, during the conclusion stage okay, of the task uh, to advance knowledge and to promote understanding. Hence, uh, the two schools decided to combine resources and co-owned co -owned the program. So the planning of the E2K science program took place from the end of 2018. So we look into teachers planning, the pairing, students grouping and resource preparation. So for the pairing of teachers, the team decided to pair a teacher from Sinan Primary School to one from during Primary School. So this will give the students the assurance uh, during the sessions when they see a teacher whom they are familiar with. The team also make sure that um, the ratio of two teachers to 20 students in an E2K class was adhered to. So next, in a, on the grouping of students, the team ensured that there are 20 students in a class. There were, there, were, there were about 20 students in a class. The team agreed that there should be a good mix of students in each group, as this will provide them with the rare opportunity to interact and share ideas from peers from other schools. So in some of the groups, we have um, two students from Sinan Primary School and two, two students from Juing Primary School. So with that view, students were grouped such that there were two during primary school students in a group of four or five students. This also elevated the, the anxiety of the, during, of the students from during primary school being alone in a group. So at the end of uh, 2018, the, the school leaders, officers from uh, GEP and uh, the pioneer teachers, the four of us, we met to formalize the partnership and thereafter, the teachers engaged in rounds of um, discussions and meetings 
to share their views and understanding of the E2K science program before reach, reaching a consensus on the way in which the program will be run and conducted. The team also con carry out other essential activities such as identifying the common dates, which both schools can conduct the sessions together, designing lesson plans, preparing resources needed for the E2K tasks. So after identifying the common dates, the, the team planned the tasks to be conducted for, on each day and parked the document together with other resources in Google Drive for the ease of reference. So this is an example of a document. Uh, so over here, we actually, uh, in this document, you see the, the common dates that's available and the tasks that we are going to uh, ca carry out for that, uh, for that, for that day, okay? And this is the Google Drive, which um, we will park all the resources for the ease of reference and for ease of usage. So as part of the preparation process, uh, during primary school conducted ramps, as students need to walk from the school to Sinan Primary School and then back to during primary school. So letters were also issued to parents of students from both schools to inform them that the child was selected for the program with an emphasis that the child was discouraged from pulling out from the E2K science program so as to minimize disruption to the running of the program. And students were also briefed of the appropriate behavior and attitudes uh, to adopt during the program to ensure that they benefit from the program optim optimally. Next, I will pass the time to Benjamin who will share more on the first five months, okay, our experience for the first five months during the E2K program. Okay, uh, I'm Benjamin. I'm going to share about our E2K adventures in the first five months. First, I'm going to share about the interaction within our E2K lessons, which include uh, teachers to teacher, teachers to student, and student to student. Uh, okay. So uh, first, let me begin with teachers to teachers interaction. Well, uh, we have Miss uh, Mr. Nino have uh, said before we have met up before the school term started to draw up on lesson plan and discuss about the logistic. However, we have not really worked together to do any co teaching in a class before. So quite naturally, uh, we are a bit more reserved during our first few lesson, taking turns to teach a certain part of the lesson. It might seem a little bit awkward at first, but after a few sessions, we started to pick up on the differences in our teaching style and the transition from one part of the lesson to another become much more natural. So for example, I partner Miss Aisha to teach uh, group two. And uh, I personally like to do hand-on experiment with the pupils. I will let them try out the experiment first and then let them make their observations and wonder about the results that they get. Why are they getting different results from one another? Well, Miss Aisha likes to engage the student more in a higher order thinking discussion. So it comes quite naturally in our E2K lessons. Miss Aisha will first introduce a lesson and when it's time for them to discuss about the experiment, the design of the experiment and how to conduct the experiment, I will take over. And when it's time for them to discuss and come up with a conclusion based on the experiment, Miss Aisha will again come in and guide the higher order conversation. So through this interaction, we start to pick up on one another strength and it helped us as professional to develop ourselves. Then there's also a teacher to student interactions. At first, we are unfamiliar with the pupils because uh, each of us will have uh, half the class comprises of pupils from Singnan and uh, Jingyim Primary School. So it is quite natural for us to pick on the student from our own school and it might not be fair. So one way we solve this problem is to use ice cream stick so we have item stick of uh with the names of the people written on them and when we want to ask a question we will just pick up ice cream stick from the cup and we ask the call out the name of the student but after some time we 
become more familiar with the pupils and uh, we are able to just call names of the pupil, direct the question after we are familiar with the pupils. And uh, one part that worries us the most at first is the interaction between student and student because they are from different primary school and uh, we are quite a bit worried that it might be very awkward for them because each group, there's a mix of pupils from uh, Singnan and uh, Jingyin Primary School. We are worried that within the group, the Singnan pupil will only talk to the Singnan pupil and uh, the same happen to the Jingyin pupils. But it turns out that our worry is uh, unfound. Children being children, they actually mix around quite well. In fact, at by the end of the first session, we started seeing the students start to talk between uh, among themselves, even from different primary school. And they interact freely and share uh, their own experiences and their school experiences. It comes naturally for them. Okay. And so, uh, so what uh, we, we learned from this is that uh, this co-teaching involves more than lesson preparation. So as we develop our lesson and as we get to pick up on the strength of one another, uh, we get to know more and uh, it co cooperate. the co-teaching comes more, much more naturally. And okay. And we also talk about the resource management. Okay, we de uh, by dividing the lesson preparation between school, it reduces the load from a certain school for one of the school. So, for example, we taught three topics uh, last year. So, for two of, of the topics, we prepare our lesson in our own uh, science lab in Singnan Primary School. And Jingyin Primary School, they uh, brought by the apparatus for the second topic. So in a way, it uh, reduced the load. However, uh, one of the challenges that we come up with is to find common dates for lessons and meeting. This, uh, used by using Google uh, Drive, it helps us to uh, reduce this uh, complication a lot because using uh, when we share the document on Google Drive, we are able to see because physically we are from different school and sometimes it's very difficult for us to meet one another. Okay, uh, with that, I'm going to pass the uh, presentation to Ms. Aisha to share about E2K in action. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ben. My name is Aisha. I'm from Jing Primary. So Ben actually shared with us uh, what happened for the first five months of the E2K implementation and the general um, issues that we faced uh, during our implementation. So I'm going to do for this section is really to give you a more personal recount of how E2K was implemented and probably a closer look as to how I felt as a teacher implementing the sessions. So when we speak about collaborating between the two schools, right, Sinan and Green, I think one of the most advantageous things is the close proximity that we have between the two schools, as mentioned earlier by my teammates. Uh, so it was about a 10 minute walk from Green to Sinan and Lina and I would actually walk the students to and fro. So uh, throughout our sessions, we never had to activate our wet weather plan, which was a relief. All right. So uh, in addition to that, actually the walking from during to Singnan actually allowed our students to set the stage and to, um, in a way, uh, be mentally prepared for the E2K lesson. So they are mentally prepared to know that they are actually going to another school to have an enrichment program and it's going to be with students that they don't see every day. But eventually you realize that they call these students, right? These other students, their friends. Lah. So they actually build uh, relationships and they and you do hear from them, uh, especially now that they are kind of miss their, their friends that they had uh, interactions with uh, in Singa when they had their E2K sessions. So one other thing that we need to take note of is actually the fact that we are moving from foot on foot from during to Singnan. That means that all the planning and all the uh, transport of resources have to be done prior because we cannot be transporting our resources uh, from during to Singnan on foot. And then we also have to manage our students, right? Uh, so uh, that's one thing that you need to take note of, like, the fact that we don't have buses or transports to go to the other, to other, to the other school. Another thing is that it always... Our students always attract attention from the passerby. So I was probably wondering why we have 10 students walking uh, from one school to another uh, at the end of uh, the school day. All right. So the other thing that I actually found memorable throughout this E2K implementation was actually the first day itself. Right. So the first day itself, what happened is that as with any new relationship form, right, there will always be this warm up period. So similarly, for the first day of E2K, 
it was not just our students that uh, had to break the ice. So even though the Singan teacher and the during primary teacher, we already had our discussion prior to the session. It was the first time that we were actually in a classroom where we actually had to manage students, right? And both of us were from different schools with different expectations. So when we were discussing, we didn't really go into the nitty gritty about who to say what and who to take which section. So when we first saw our students, I guess we were just, um, we just didn't, as we didn't, um, we were still feeling our boundaries, lah. We were feeling the grounds, okay? So what happened was we didn't manage to establish uh, the routines that we know, right, as teachers is extremely crucial. So um, this one thing that we needed to um, quickly quickly intervene. So what happened was that um, it was pretty quite chaotic the first session, the first session, but we quickly um, solved it or we quickly um, established um, routines, right, from classical lesson onwards. And I just wanted to say that it's actually very important, right, especially when you are working between teachers from different schools and between students from different schools because expectations will definitely differ. So you need to make sure that prior to the first lesson, uh, you establish similar expectations of behavior and routines, both from the teacher's perspective and from the student's perspective. Right, so we resolved this pretty quickly. So uh, we just ensured that subsequently there were consistent, there were consistent routines and uh, structures being put in place. So another thing that I found pretty uh, fulfilling during the E2K lesson was actually the on-the-go improvisation of our processes. So you see here our data collection methods, how we slowly progress from whiteboard, right, and then to spreadsheets, and then to Google spreadsheets. And then we realized that sometimes uh, it's a skill to pick up, like, to actually identify trends and discuss it during class. So sometimes when we look back at it, right, uh, when we have, if we have this data in, on the cloud or when we, are, when we are able to store this data uh, in Google spreadsheet or whatever mode that we did, Right, uh, we are able to look back at it and we gather more insight. Also, we are able to compare uh, between two classes, right? Uh, how the results differ. And we're also able to gain more insights from them and we can use it and bring it up for discussion for the next se session. Right, another thing that you can look at here is actually simple things like um, how we actually manage the, the part about uh, arranging the procedures during E2K sessions. So initially, we actually just use paper, but then we realized that um, it doesn't benefit our students because the procedures move about and then they were, they were, they were, they were very distracted as they were trying to carry out the, the activity itself based on the procedures that they decided. So we improvised and then we used Velcro and laminated the session, uh, laminated the procedures. And that helped a lot because the students were, it didn't take the students away from the from the heart of the E2K lesson, which is actually the, the carrying out of the activity and the discussion itself. So nitty gritties like this is important because even though it seems like it's not important, even though it seems like small things, right? Um, we we try to not distract our students with these things. So we try to make it as smooth as possible, this kind of thing, so they can focus on what is key, which is actually really just the, the activity, the discussions, and what they take away from it. All right. All right, so that's the program. Another one thing that, okay, this is just our students. So classroom dynamics, right? Uh, we were actually quite um, impressed with the classroom dynamics. So what happened is that uh, during students and senior students, obviously they don't see each other as often and students, but the students were pretty dynamic and they adapted quickly as long as expectations were set clearly within the classroom. Lah. So we were always worried about how students would respond to one another, but the nature of the activities in E2K helped to ease that tension. And then perspectives and sharing were always very interesting. And I think this is evident even when we do it in our own classrooms, but even more so when it's in even more so when it's in the school. All right, so that's one benefit. But this is actually, I think we were doing hidden light here, if I'm not wrong. All right, so this was actually the identification of the dispersion of light. So um Hidden light was an interesting chapter. So this one learning point that I learned as I was trying to gather, me and Lina were trying to gather the resources for hidden light. So we have all the resources, right? Like uh, we have the resources, we have the guidebooks, right? So uh, I remember for hidden light, Jewing was actually in charge of the resources. And it wasn't easy at all because I remember going up and down trying to search for the correct light source. It was so difficult to find it. And all we had to do was actually to ask, right? And so there's one thing that I learned always to ask, right? So all the guidebooks and all the... um the help that we have, I mean, the written help that we have, right? That's one source of information. But I think one other source of information is really to ask people who have already done it so that they, they already learned, right? So we just leverage on it rather than go through the whole process again. All right, so that's one, all right? Okay, so even whole class discussions, as mundane as it sounds, the whole class discussions, right? I actually thought um, I was very interested. I was very, um, I felt very um, heartened, okay, not heartened. Like I was, 
I felt fulfilled, lah, okay, it was fulfilling for me to see how the whole class discussions actually evolved over the session. So something as simple as class discussions. So Singnan uh, primary teachers, then junior primary teachers and the GP branch officers after certain lesson observations or um, there were, I mean, we have sit down sessions to actually discuss how this classroom discussions um, was being carried out. So um, I think as we progress uh, along, right, we managed to tweak classroom discussions better. So I think one key thing that helped was really being open-minded and receptive to feedback. So we are all teachers and we all have taught for a couple of years, and right? So but I think as during in an E2K setting, it's always good to remain open-minded and to be willing to listen and learn, all right, from what others have uh, observed. So uh, for me, uh, I think, for example, we, I work with Ben in the classroom. So if Ben were to signal to me that my classroom discussion is not very effective, it's really to take it uh, openly and to better myself. So even classroom discussions, I felt as I was teaching, um, the kind of or the depth and breadth of class, classroom discussions that we had in the E2K sessions uh, progressed as the lessons, um, as we went on with lessons. Right, okay, so um, I think all in all, right, before I, uh, before I pass the mic to Sumita, I felt that as teachers, collaborating with another school uh, for our own students was actually an eye-opening experience. So the liaising, the discussion, the working together, and just being the know of how another school carries out um, their lessons, right? Because as we are discussing our lessons, of course, we have uh, insight as to how the other school carries it out, right? All those, are, I feel, very eye-opening. And it benefited me as a science teacher in one school, like one particular school. So it opened my eyes and I'm able to see how other schools do it, right? So it was fulfilling and it helped me develop professionally. So I think one clear one thing that's important, right, is actually about com is communication. Right? So when we work between schools, right, or inter-school, right, what's most important is that we have to be open about processes and feedback. So students from both schools can benefit optimally. So we need to be clear about our intention, which is really to benefit the students, right? So um, when we talk about communication, it has to be consciously facilitated. So for our group, right, that, I mean, usually, there will be someone who has to facilitate the communication because otherwise we don't see each other as often and then things get lost. So we need to be very quick. So on that day itself, um, whatever that we need to say, we have to make sure that it's being communicated. And also it helps that we actually schedule in our post, our pre-lesson observation, our post and pre-lesson discussions. So um, this provides us the platform to ensure that we communicate because it's impossible to carry out a collaboration if we don't communicate. Yes, so uh, that's what I gathered or that's what I gained, right, personally as an E2K teacher working together with another school. So I'm just going to pass the mic over to Smita now to let uh, for her to share how we're going to move forward, right, at, um, as we progress uh, with this E2K program. All right, over to you, Smita. So hi, I'm Sumita from Zinan Primary and I'm the last speaker, which means we are nearing the end of the presentation. Um, so unfortunately, this year, E2K lessons have been suspended. Uh, due to COVID-19. So moving forward in 2020, if it permits, uh, we hope that the lessons will actually start some, sometime this year. And 2021, we will focus on the use of thinking routines, questioning techniques to encourage our pupils to participate in meaningful classroom discussions. We would want to reinforce the E2K objectives uh, as we resume lessons. So the objectives are to engage our pupils in scientific inquiry that will help them develop the habits, the attitudes and the dispositions that scientists possess. So it also acts as a platform, the E2K lessons, for pupils to gain 21st century competencies such as critical and inventive thinking and effective communication skills. So through these lessons, we hope to actually build these skills and boost the confidence and of course to encourage our pupils to think like young scientists. Uh, we would like to also continue the way we have been doing the planning processes and the lesson preparation as shared by my other team members earlier on. These, less, um, these planning processes and lesson prep sessions have been very integral in the professional development of ourselves when we first um, started our journey in E2K in 2019 and we hope to extend this learning to the newly trained E2K teachers in our schools and to continue in this PD journey as science teachers. So in the midst of wanting to achieve these outcomes as we move forward, we need to be mindful of the following challenges. So as plans regarding enrichment lessons in and outside school are very fluid due to the current situation, only time will tell us how we can progress with safe management measures in place when E2K, E2K lessons resume. 
Uh, other administrative challenges include staff movement. So if you have trained teachers uh, leaving for their own professional development courses, um, then you would have to see how you can ma maximize uh, staff deployment you know, in engaging the students in the lessons. And conducting, two, uh, it, conducting E2K lessons for two levels, uh, which we started in 2020, early this year, uh, would also pose the challenge of finding common days for both schools. So in 20, 2019, we did it for the primary four pupils. And in 2020, we, uh, we offered the E2K lessons for the P5, which are the previous P4 pupils and the current uh, P4 pupils. So there's two levels to, in 2020. Yeah. So moving on, I'd like to share a quote that emerged from one of our discussions. So this was clearly before COVID-19. Now we are at a point where we want to conduct the lessons and pupils want to attend the lessons, but we're very constrained by the pandemic. So this aside, yes, we have seen how E2K benefits our pupils and encourages them to be engaged in scientific inquiry. It has also been a great learning journey for us since we started planning in 2018, actually, uh, late 20, 2018 and conducting lessons in 2019 and early 2020. So this concludes our presentation. We hope you have gained some insights from our sharing. We wish you a fruitful and enjoyable learning experience on your E2K journey. So till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.